Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday. Happy Friday. It is Friday, the seventh day of January 2022. Um, I hope you're all healthy and COVID free today. I hope that your family is also healthy and COVID free and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and those first responders trying to save lives. Blessings upon those also that pick up garbage for us, keep our streets and sidewalks clean. Blessings also upon those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on those trying to help deliver and rescue the victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, child pornography, pedophilia and child molestation, human trafficking and sex slave operations, and curses, double curses on the perverts and greedy ones responsible for the suffering of these people. Finally, blessings upon the homeless, 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States here in January without a roof over their head and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom and on those trying to help. My apologies, Knicks Nation. I've uh, been very busy at work. Today is one of those days. And so I haven't, I usually would have uploaded prior to now, but um, I'm on my lunch break, so I get a chance to do it now. Anyway, um, there was a basketball game last night. Our New York Knicks defeated the Boston Celtics with 1.5 seconds left on an RJ Barrett bank shot from three point range. 108, 105. What a game. What a game. I mean, I was quiet like most of the game, like on Twitter. I'm usually commenting, but I was more quiet yesterday because I was just waiting to see if they were going to make a run. The Knicks were 25 points down in the second quarter. I mean, and, and usually what happened, what has been happening this season is the first unit creates a deficit, and usually Mob Deep comes in and closes that gap or overtakes the gap. Well, you know, when they came in yesterday, Mob Deep was off yesterday. They just wasn't doing their business the way they normally would. Obviously, we're missing Derrick Rose, but even since Derrick Rose went down on December 22nd, Mob Deep has been coming and doing work. But because things have been getting switched around because of the COVID health and safety protocol, I think it caused us to be off a little bit on the second unit. And so, and then you're playing Alec Burks now on the first unit. So you had Toppin, Gibson, Quickly, and Grimes in the second unit. And Toppin played 10 minutes, didn't score minus 11. Grimes played six minutes, didn't score minus 14. Now, I don't blame these guys completely because, like I said, things have been switched up a lot. And also with Tom Thibodeau, if you're a rookie or a first or second year player and you don't, I know if you don't produce right away, he will pull you quickly. He'll give you a lot of opportunity when you're one of his dudes. But if you're not and you don't come in and light it up right away, he's going to pull you. And so that's what happened with those two guys yesterday. But it wasn't just them. I mean, the whole second unit just couldn't get come back from uh, the deficit. But as strange as it is, this was really one of the few times this season that the first unit led the comeback. And it was led by Evan Fournier. Now, um, do I still want to trade Evan Fournier? Yes. <laughs> Matter of fact, more now because he's played well. Maybe we can get some, you know, some interest in him. But, and I don't usually listen, I usually just listen to Tom Thibodeau's post-game conferences. But sometimes I do want to hear from some of the players, and I did want to hear from Fournier after a 41-point outburst yesterday. And he said some very interesting things yesterday. He said that when the ball, when everybody get a chance to touch the ball, he didn't like the fact that against the last game we played, RJ was going off and they kept feeding RJ and this time he was going off and they kept feeding him. He was talking about it, that the team should be more consistently balanced with everybody touching the ball. And I thought that was profound and it's absolutely true. Um, But that is centered in Julius Randle. And 
This is one of the few times. I don't even remember the last time Julius Randle played 38 minutes and had zero turnovers. I mean zero. That, to me, was a key because what I noticed about him, he was 8 for 20, so it's not like he shot the ball extremely well yesterday. But what he did, I didn't recall one time where he didn't make a decisive quick move. That was telling. That was the, the first game. And that's why I believe he had zero turnovers. He wasn't wasting time. A couple of times it looked like he was tempted to start trying to dribble into traffic and he caught himself or maybe Tom was yelling and he gave the ball up to a ball handler. And that avoided much problem because even when he didn't take shots, I liked, I liked that he was decisive and within a few split seconds decided to take a shot or not. That's big time. Now, speaking of Julius Randle, everybody was hyped. Knicks Nation, let me just tell you something. First of all, y'all get too personal with some of this stuff. So he put the thumbs down and told told the crowd, STFU. I mean, come on. He's a competitor. This is NBA. Yeah. Was it wrong? Yes. He shouldn't have did that. He shouldn't have did that. People pay their hard-earned money. They could boo if they want. They could cheer if they want. They're paying his salary. So, he, you know, he shouldn't have did that. And he probably should come out. And apologize. Somebody should say something to him. But at the same time, people was getting upset, calling for him to be traded. And people was yelling on somebody's talking heads, man. I mean, like, you got to remember, there's dudes that get paid to create drama with the Knicks. They That's what they do. They get paid for that. Berman, these cats on SNY, these cats, Stephen Bob, they get paid to create Knicks drama. So any sometimes they create it when it's not there. And then when somebody like Julius gives them an opportunity, boy, they all over that. Don't get caught up in that. I'm more, I'm more caught up in the fact that for the second straight game, Julius Randle made very good decisions with the basketball. See, yes, he has stunk pretty a lot of times this year. He's definitely below par what he was doing last year. But what he came back from the health and safety protocols and did was get back to what he was making quick decisions with the basketball. Pass it, shoot it within a second or two. And, and, and using and hustling on defense. And of course, his natural bent is to be a strong rebounder. And he was doing that as well. So, um, I was very happy with the game. I had one of the few comments I did during the game. Before all of that, I was like, this is when they were down 20. I said, you know, Julius Randle's playing a good game because he was, right? And so Fournier was just, it was just one of them nights. You know, this is the NBA, and we've seen it happen to us a lot. As a matter of fact, Josh Richardson on the Celtics, the game they beat us, he was going nuts, you know, when he don't usually do that. But finally, one of our players <laughs> did it to somebody, and I'm glad it was the Celtics. In the NBA, you know, everybody's good. And so anybody could go off at any time. Fournier was going nuts. He hit 10 three-pointers, y'all. 30 points in just three. And sometimes it was just after a while, you could see he was in the rhythm. He was just tossing it up and it was going in. Okay. So we got, it was good all around. And RJ. Now, thing about Mr. Barrett, Mr. Rowan, y'all got to understand. Like I told you before the game yesterday, if you look at yesterday's video, I said, I'm not worried about RJ, whether he scores 30 or not. You know why? Because he's also clutch. You got to remember, this is the kid when he was 18 years old and he was the night he was drafted and he did a presser the night he was drafted and he put his hand to him and said, I'm a Nick. He wanted to be here. He wanted what Julius Randle put his thumb down about RJ embraced. And that's the type of kid he is. He's not scared of the big moment. He's not scared of the big shot. He's not scared of the crowd. He is supremely confident, mentally tough. And you need that when you come into New York. And so that last shot, I mean, it was tired at 105. So I was like, either we're going to get a hero or we're going into overtime. When that shot went on and then off the backboard. <laughs> woo! Man, that's big time right there. That takes some guts, man. That takes some nuts right there. And RJ, he did it, okay? So that's why we keep our RJ back. Now, I'm going to talk more 
probably over the weekend on Monday about Cam Reddish because some of, I have to give y'all credit. I listen. I, I listen. If some of y'all say something that makes sense, I will. I will bring it up. Okay. And so somebody made a couple of y'all, maybe two, three, four of y'all said, you know what, Cam could start at the two or the three. RJ could start the other one, and then you could bring Grimes off the bench. And you know what, that is true. And Cam, to me, hasn't gotten the same opportunity that RJ got, you know, in his first three years because Atlanta is filled with wings. You know, you're talking about Bogdanovich, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter, you know, they filled with wings, man. And so he, he wasn't going to get that same opportunity that RJ got when he came. And then last year in the playoffs, I think they had a couple of injuries and homeboy was showing out last year in the playoffs and then again this year he's been doing work so um I'm totally into getting him we'll talk more about like like I said probably Monday we'll talk more about that but I'm totally into getting him and if we could offload Fournier for him I'm all in let's do that so we'll talk more about it because there's more complications to it contractually and all that but we'll talk about it on Monday but for last night man um Alec Burks. Now, Alec Burks had nine boards, seven assists, a steal. He only scored three points, but he was very instrumental in terms of, you can see, rebounding the basketball, passing the basketball. The Knicks had 23 assists last night. Not the best, but we need, you know, that's, that's going to, I think that'll come. That'll come in a couple of ways. If Julius keeps doing what he's doing, making the correct reads, making decisions, even if it's not the correct read, just making a decision quickly and moving on it. And not pounding the air out of the ball. If he keeps doing that and he keeps, and then we start, the guys start knocking down shots on a regular basis. It don't have to be 40 points a game, obviously, but if they could knock shots down at the three point line on that 40% level, like they were doing last year, the Knicks are going to be rough. Now, yesterday, again, that was an anomaly. You can't expect them to shoot 50% from three every night, but we could get a 40 piece because we've been, we did that last year. They could shoot 40% from three. And again, remember what we always said. Tom Thibodeau, a defensive-oriented coach like Tibbs, you know, or like a Eric Spolstra, their teams are going to get better as the year goes on, especially when they add new guys. They're going to get better because they're defensive-oriented, and they're going to they're going to improve. The Knicks are now turning that corner. You're seeing it now. This is the this now the Knicks. This is the what 39th game. The 39th game. You're close to the midpoint. You're going to start seeing them get more comfortable and improve. Now, that's the decision the Knicks have to make regarding Fournier. Is he getting comfortable enough now so that he could be more consistent? Or is this just an anomaly because he's playing the Celtics? I don't know. But I believe we could get better. We can upgrade. Okay. We'll talk about that, like I said. But RJ, Burks, Robinson, Randall, you know, it's all good. I'm not sure what they're going to do. When Kemba comes back. And the reason I say that is because I'm liking the fact that they're sitting him to make sure that the next time he steps on the floor, he's playing on two legs instead of one. But that arthritic knee is going to flare up again. He might play, even if you don't sit, if you sit him in back to back, which I'm sure they're going to do now. But even though if you get, a, you know, like the next schedule, if you get a schedule where you play, let's say three games in a week, he's going to have to sit. One of those games, even if it's not back to back, he's got to sit one of those games. That knee is not going to hold up. And as much as y'all keep thinking Tom Thibodeau's got to change what he does, stop beating your head up against the wall. He's not going to do that. He is what he is. So when, when, when Kemba plays, it's going to be 35 minutes. It is what it is. Okay. Now, obviously he trusts Burks to come in as that backup point guard. At least at this point, he doesn't trust Deuce enough to put him in there. And again, we know we've been through that, rehearsed that, how he treats rookie point guards. He's hard on them. So it is what it is. So we're going to have to go from there. But I'm just glad, to me, the biggest news out of yesterday wasn't Evan Fournier's outburst. That was what won the game for us. You know, got us back. Without that, we we lose that game. But coming back from 25 down, but it was Julius Randle with zero turnovers. That was the zero turnovers from Julius Randle. That's you know, they, they, the media made a big deal because Westbrook, who le- regularly leads the league in turnovers, had a, one game where he didn't commit a turnover, but psh, whatever. Julius Randle having zero turnovers and playing 38 minutes 
and scoring 22 points, that's big time. That's big time. See, now, when you look at the overall turnovers, I think the Knicks, let me see. I think they, oh, let me see. I know they, they were low. Let me see what they were yesterday. I'm pretty sure they were pretty low. If the overall turnovers for the Knicks yesterday, look at this. The Knicks had eight turnovers for the whole game. See that? And a lot of that is because Julius didn't have it. If he had his usually three to six, you know, might have been a different game also. I'm very happy. Yeah, I don't like that he put the thumb down, but I ain't worried about that. I'm a Knicks fan. I want them to win. You understand? Don't get caught up in the media hype, y'all. Just, you know, they're out there to create drama. Don't let them give you the catnip. We won. Right? And the Knicks over the last 10 games are 6-4. and four. That's an upward trend. Big game tomorrow in Boston. You know Boston's not going to sit around and, and cry. And, and they're going to come back strong to try to beat the Knicks. Because right now, Brad Stevens is a little bit on the hot seat. The coach is a little bit on the hot seat. They expect it more out of this team than what they're getting. They got two all-star wings, so they were expecting more. I kind of expected more, a little bit of them too, but I did think the Knicks would match up well against them, especially with a healthy Mitch Rob. Speaking of Mitch Rob, Mitch Rob played 27 minutes yesterday, seven points, um, four rebounds, and what was in two steals, two turnovers, no blocks. But what the problem was with Mitch Rob yesterday, when we were down 25, y'all would notice he was guarding two guys. A lot. <laughs> Whenever that's happening, it's a hard game for him because he's when he's guarding two players a lot, like he did all the first half, guarding two players. Okay, then the ref stepped in with some dumb calls on him. You know, I don't blame Mitch Rob at all. And and then he was when they stopped when they started guarding a little bit better in the second half. Mitch Rob played better. It is what it is, man. So, um, yeah. Taj Gibson, Taj Gibson was solid as usual. Quickly was also very important yesterday. He didn't, it wasn't like he had an explosive game, but a very efficient game. Cause overall, in my view, IQ has been very inefficient this year. Very inefficient. Tom is continually effusive with his praise of IQ. Fine. But he's been inefficient. Yesterday, he was efficient. Six of 12 from the field, three of five from the three point line, three assists, two rebounds. Very efficient. 16 points plus nine. He had two turnovers, but it's okay. And then he had, you know, plus nine. You know, you can't ask for much better than that, you know, from, from quick doing that. If he can continue to do that on a regular basis, become efficient. And I don't know if it had to do with the fact that Julius was moving the basketball better. I don't know what it was, but he was just more efficient yesterday, period. That was a dumb play he did the other night when him and Obi was in the open court. He he comes from under the basket back to three point line. No, I'm not having it, man. See, but see, like I said, Tom loves him, so he's gonna wink at that. If that was Deuce, he'd be very. But hey, it's what it is. But anyway, Quick did play good yesterday. He played good, man. He really did. So that with Fournier and Randall overcoming 25 points, baby. I mean, that's big time. I don't care who the team is. It's the NBA. They came back from 25 down. So Boston's going to be the thing about Boston, Barkley. And again, I don't like listening to Shaq and Barkley too much because they more respect to them as a Hall of Fame NBA players. But as announcers, it's really a clown show, honestly, in my view. It's like clowns. You know, it's a circus, but whatever. But he did say something important yesterday. Boston's offense. See, y'all complain about Tibbs' offense, but Boston's offense is bad because they don't. All they do is give the ball to either Brown or Tatum and let them go off. That's it. There's not much ball movement. There's not much, you know, getting everybody involved. They they just give it to one of them, and that's how actually Tatum almost brought them back in the game because he hit a big time shot at the end of that fourth quarter. So. Um, you know, they, they lean on him, but it's obviously not working because, you know, they are now 18 and what are they? 18 and 21, 18 and 21. So they were tied with us. We just moved ahead of them with that win. So we got to beat these guys tomorrow. We got to beat these guys tomorrow. Um, I don't know who's going to start in terms of the point guard. I would really like Kemba to sit one more game at least, but apparently they're looking, they're monitoring him in practice and he's not ready yet, you know? And so I don't want them. And that's how my fear was that 
the, the Tibbs were forcing to come out there. Not forcing, but because Kemba's always going to say, I can play. And if Tibbs say, are you ready? And he say, I'm ready. Even if he's not, he'll go out there on one leg and play. But apparently Tibbs is playing, monitoring him more, not just saying, are you okay? He's monitoring me, watching the team doctors watching, making sure he's good. I don't want him coming out there trying to be hero on one leg. We don't need that right now. So that's going to hurt us. So if you're going to bring him back, let's wait till, you know, next week when we play San Antonio. Maybe I think we play San Antonio Monday or Tuesday. Let's do it then if he's ready. Okay. Um, but that, that could, but I'm really hoping Alec Burke starts at the point guard again and we run the same thing. But this time you just continue because to me, as long as Julius stays on this streak, of playing the right way, the whole team's going to get better. And it's going to happen fast. Okay. As long as he does that, if he decides to go back to hero ball and I'm going to take over and I'm dribbling as the point forward, it's going to take the whole team back, you know, period. But apparently, as even when he talking about he don't care what the media says, you know, he's lying, he's lying right? Because, and you know, Tom also lying because Tom yelling to him, get a ball to a guard. They're yelling that to to him to do that. They're conscious of him turning the ball over. And he's conscious of it because yesterday he had zero turnovers. So don't pay attention to his little thumbs down, little tyrant, whatever. Just keep playing the right way. That's all that's all I care about. Because if he plays the right way as the focal point of the team, we're going to win. Okay, we're going to win a, more than our share of games. Okay, and so this is critical right here. This, this period that we're in right now is critical. We getting ready. They're getting ready to go into a part of the season. Um, and also good news is that D Rose also is now starting his rehab. Um, you know, so I thought it would be like mid March before he came back, but apparently it's late February, early March. He might be able to come back. So if he comes back late February, that's really good news for us. Very good news because this is the schedule, man. They got at Boston tomorrow at 730. San Antonio at the garden, Dallas at the garden, then at Atlanta. Then Charlotte uh, on Martin Luther King Day at the Garden. Then Minnesota, and that's a back-to-back. Charlotte and Minnesota are back-to-back. Then you know, so that that's going to be, you know, and then and then the end of January at Cleveland, at Miami, at Milwaukee. That's Murderers Row right there. At and before that, we at home against the Clippers. Then it's at Cleveland, at Miami, at Milwaukee. So if we can pick up some ground before we go through that Murderers Row. We in good shape and we in good position to do it. That's why I'm saying it's critical. I don't care what Julius does with his thumbs. <laughs> Bruh, just keep playing the right way. Okay? Keep playing the right way. And so if, and if that's the case, Fournier, I'm not, he's not going to get 40 a game, but he should be more consistent. He is, in all fairness, like I said, I still want to trade him, but in all fairness, he is a type of player and European players like that. They need to, Every, they need to see that ball sprayed around. They need everybody to touch it. And, and then they need to get into that rhythm like that. And that, that's, that's him. And so Julius is doing that. The Knicks are doing that. Let's just keep this going. Okay. Forget the, forget the thumb drama. Forget the thumb down drama. Let's just keep this going. So tomorrow against Boston, um, you know, the Knicks have pretty much everybody has went into health and safety. I'm not going to even name a couple of players that hasn't because I don't want to <laughs> bring it on them. Just a couple of players haven't, but most players have went into health and safety already at this point. And now even with it, apparently like Mitch Rob had two, he didn't even have a positive test. It was inconclusive. That's why they put him in health and safety. Then he had two positive negative tests after that and he came out. So they're loosening the rules a little bit. So he, there's no 10 days now, you know, so even if somebody has to go in there, it's just a couple of days, but this is just a critical stretch of games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven winnable games. Not saying they're going to win all seven, but seven winnable games we got coming up right here that could really put us in a dip. Look, we don't, right now, the Knicks, um, between them and the sixth seed is two and a half games. Between them and the fifth seed is three games. And they in a 10 seed right now. So between the fifth seed and the 10th seed, there's a three games. That in one week, that could change. Okay, everything could change. And we knew from the beginning of this season, the East is going to be like that. It's going to be like that. The only teams right now that I could say 
you know, cl- clearly um, differentiating themselves are the Bulls, the, the Nets, and the Bucks. And I told you, if Kyrie Irving came back in January, all bets are off. And he's back. Okay. And he's thinking about getting the jab. So if he does that and he's back for all their game, their odds are on favor to go all the way because I mean, they rough, man. The only reason I never, I always doubted that they would do it is because playing a full season, them cats don't do it. Especially Kyrie. He just can't last a full season. He's been injury prone a lot. But if you ask him to come in the season at January, he, now he's, he's going to be in midseason form and he, he ain't hurt. He's healthy. That's going to be hard. But those three teams, Chicago, Brooklyn, and Milwaukee, clearly have differentiated themselves from the rest of the, of the conference. You, Miami is, is on the verge of doing that, and Philly is on the verge, kind of. But we can catch them. We can catch them. Okay? So, it's on now, y'all. <laughs> it's on. So, this is a very important stretch. I'm hoping the Knicks just keep playing the right way, and we're going to have something going on here. Um, anyway. Please enjoy your weekend. I'm not going to watch that game live tomorrow night. We're going to be going out with some friends uh, celebrating the late celebration of our anniversary. So we're going out again tomorrow night to a restaurant. Restaurant down here called Clyde's. It's inter- interesting, right? It's not Clyde's Wine and Dine, but it's Clyde's. We're going out to Clyde's tomorrow night, but I'm going to watch the game for sure when we get back from Clyde's. <laughs> but anyway, but I'll review the game. Y'all enjoy it. Be safe out there. Again, don't let the media hype get to y'all. Don't take that personal. The Knicks are playing good finally. Julius is playing good. Let's just keep that going. Shalom.